Grace Community Church of God. So excited to be with you all today. Welcome back to Grace Connection, where we are connecting with you guys through this lovely screen. Um, I was asked to give a little devotion today and share a little bit of my heart, so I'm excited to be here with you all. Before we get started, let's just go ahead and open up with a word of prayer and just invite the Holy Spirit in. Lord, I just thank you so much for today. God, I thank you for your loving kindness, for your peace that surpasses all understanding. I thank you, God, that you're an on-time God and you're a present help in time of need, God. We can call to you and you're there, Lord, as a father, as a friend, as a comforter, as a provider, as a healer, as everything that we need, Lord. So we say, come Holy Spirit, be in this place, be there for everybody under the sound of my voice, those who are watching and who will watch, God, in the future. Let their hearts be touched and let there be good soil and good ground for this word to be laid on that I believe you have given for such a time as this. Touch my heart, O oh God. Guide my words, Lord. Let them be pleasing in your sight, God. Let me be your mouthpiece, God. And just continue to bring us closer together. Draw us closer to you. Give us a heart, O oh God, that says yes. No matter what the season, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what we're going through, no matter what the world looks like, God, give us a heart that says yes, God. Yes to your will and yes to your way. And Lord, we just love you. We're grateful, grateful for you, God. We praise your name. And we're looking for good things to be done in this time, even after these these few minutes of, of spending time in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I hope you guys are all doing well at home or wherever you're you're watching this from. Um, when I was asked to give a little little devotion, if you will, I just simply thought, Lord, what do you want me to talk about? What do you want me to say? I feel like when you've been in church most of your life or all of your life, all of your life, most of you can relate. Um, you know, you can come up with a with a devotion or a sermon because we know the Word of God and we've lived um, some time. I say that as 30, <laughs> but I um, have been in church all my life and I, you know, it's easy for you to put together three points, I feel like, for me anyway. But in the season in which we're living in, you know, especially now, I just simply don't want to do that. I want it to be from the Father. And so, not that it's bad, you know, to put together your three points, you know, the word is in our hearts and, and we're supposed to be ready in season. So I understand that, but just truly in the times in which we're living in and you guys get it, you know, issues on all levels, whether it be finances or health or racial issues or tension all throughout families and communities, um, death of loved ones. We've seen just a lot of death recently. Um, I feel like we really just need to hear from the father. And it's not for me to try to conjure up something to sound good. I want it to really be from, from the Father. And so I was just laying there last night, and I just said, God, what do you want me to say? You know, and I went to sleep kind of thinking about it and praying about it. And when I woke up this morning, I was sitting on the edge of my bed, and I just felt like the Lord said, do you still say yes? Does your soul still say yes? And um, it's very timely, right? Yes means obedience. Yes means yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes means it's not about me. Not about my feelings, my emotions, really even my thoughts. What I desire, what I want, what it looks like. Um, does your soul still say yes? So that's the title of today's um, devotion or little message. Um, do you still say yes? Does your soul still say yes? There's a song that I used to love to listen to, still do. It's by Shekinah Glory, and Chris will put a link to it right after this or down below in your um, description if you want to listen to it after this. And it's a song that I love to worship to, and when I felt like the Lord said that to me, it brought that back to my memory. And literally, the song is just titled, Yes, and it's by Shekinah Glory. And it's just basically, it's, it's repetitive. Um, it's a great worship song, a great prayer song. So I used to listen to it a lot when I would go into my prayer time. But basically, it says the same thing. It's a question that's being asked, like the Lord is asking, asking, does your heart and soul still say yes? Um, there's more that I require of you. Do you still say yes? Come up a little higher. Do you still say yes? And then it goes into a response. 
and it just says yes. My soul says yes. My mind says yes. I'll do what you say. Um, yes to your will. Yes to your way. I won't stray, Jesus. My soul says yes. It's a beautiful song. I immediately get um, teary-eyed, you know, and emotional because it is so anointed, and I feel the Holy Spirit. But I encourage you to listen to that song after this and just spend some time in prayer just asking the Lord to show you those areas in your life that maybe you're not saying yes to or to show you how to continue to say yes because the pressure is so turned up right now and I'm, I'm sure many of us feel it across the body of Christ and I'm not just talking about our denomination, people all over the world. Um, the pressure is turned up and this is what it talks about in the word of God where it's um, trials on every end, sorrows on every end and the things that so many um Christian, non-Christian are experiencing, right? Reigns on the just as well as the unjust. So in these last days, the revealing of the sons and daughters of Christ is coming forth and it is like birthing pains. It is like labor pains. And my mom made an example the other day when I was just grieving over the loss of my cousin, which many of you guys know about. And thank you for your prayers um, and your sweet, kind words. But, um, you know, we've had death of others. And just, just this past week and Pastor Kevin with his brother Leroy, we're so sorry about that. And and um, Miss Jody, and just so many people in, in the in the news and things like that, people, celebrities and such, it still affects you, right? You still feel that sadness along with so many other things, whether it be finances or COVID, a lot of fear, things like that. And so my mom was saying, you know, when it talks about the birthing pains, think about it. If you've ever been in labor, it starts out with a little contraction. And it's a little painful, a little irritating, but there's a space in between it. You know, you may have four minutes, two minutes, but then as it gets closer and closer to the time for the baby to really come forth, those contractions get closer and closer and more intense. And then they start to kind of run into each other. And it also reminds you of Job, right? Before the first messenger could even tell him, you know, about his, his animals, being killed or whatever, the next one was coming and then the next one was coming. And then before they even left, the next one was coming and telling them about the next tragedy that was happening. And it begins to be so much pressure and so much intensity all at one time that you may feel like you just can't take it anymore. We may feel like that. I have felt like that, you know, but what's the other option? What's the other option? You know, I've thought about it even at a young age of 30, like what's my other option to not serving God? I have to ride this thing out to the end, you know, and we don't know when the end will be, but things are so turned up now. You have to kind of make a decision of who you're going to serve. Choose this day who you're going to serve and, and, and stick to that. And I feel like that's a major part of does your soul still say yes? So I'm asking myself right now, and I ask you to ask yourself, does your soul still say yes? Are you still being obedient? Because if you don't say yes, you're saying no. And no response is still saying no. We know that with Christianity or serving Christ, following him, there's action that is required. And so lately I have found myself, I've had a little bit of um, neck issues going on. You guys know my son's a big boy. And <laughs> he has recently hurt my neck. And I've been going to the chiropractor and getting massages and things because it's really been debilitating. And I've had terrible headaches and things like that over the last few weeks. Um, it's been very hard to get things done and pick them up and just the normal activities. But um, I spent a lot of time just kind of laying in bed and, and um, just praying and asking God to heal me and trying to keep my neck straight. But um, it's also kind of helped me because I haven't done any movement. It's, it's also made me kind of feel like, I don't want to use the word depressed because we go through seasons. But when you're just sitting still all the time laying it's almost like it affects your mind, right? There's, there's no action. I'm not doing anything. So when I was thinking about this message this morning about does your soul say yes, I wanted to talk on a few things that keep us to continue to say yes, right? Because it's a daily thing. We daily take up our cross. We daily have to decide today I'm going to serve you. And some days are harder than others. And I truly believe in the time that what we're living in, the enemy is really wanting to use all these different things, these pressures to make us no longer say yes. And maybe we're not saying no, but we don't have a response, meaning we don't have an action. We're not putting forth that time in God's presence. We're not seeking him. We're not casting our cares. We're not doing the things that really help us to align with the Holy Spirit so we know God's heart. Because how can you say yes? What are you saying yes to? 
it's not a, a religious kind of ritual where we just say yes flippantly and we don't really know what we're saying yes to. It's a yes with a decision and a yes with an action. Um, and I'm saying this to myself because lately I've had some of that. Just even just physically not being able to move as much has just kept me in a place of stagnancy, if you will. And um, I have to get up and do things. And so spiritually, I think that truly affects us when we're not moving even physically or when we don't have something to be working towards. And if you're not spending that time in God's presence, the discipline is lacking. Okay. So that's something God's really been dealing with about. So let me just encourage you for a few moments and I won't be long. I promise. So, um, a couple things that really helped me to continue to say yes to the Lord I would say the first thing is to settle the issue that God is good and he's for you. And this is major. It's kind of like your bottom line, right? I settled the issue some years ago. No matter what, I know that God is good. His very nature is good. Who he is, is good. And that's who he is. He's good, period. And he's for me. He's always been for me. He created me. He sees me. He knows me. He loves me. He has good things prepared for me. So even when situations happen, health issues that are debilitating or family issues where a, a, a loss of a loved one that came kind of unexpectedly, you know, or, or whatever your case is, put your blank in there. You have to settle the issue. We have to settle the issue that God is good and he is for us. And when that's your bottom line, no matter what happens, you may be tempted to be like, God, what in the world? And that's okay. We can question God on what is happening, but we're not to question who he is, right? His sovereignty and that he's for us and he loves us and his nature is good and all good things come from him and he will withhold no good thing from us, right? We're his children, even when we don't act right and do things as we should. He's for us and he's good. So we have to settle that issue. The second thing, and this is where I'll give you some scripture, is that we have to determine, you know, not my will, but yours be done. And that is so much easier said than done. And sometimes we don't even realize that our will isn't lining up to his will. We really think it's a good idea. We really think this is God's will. But if you're not spending time with him and we're not seeking his heart, we won't know what his will is. So I love the example of Jesus. He's our greatest example, Luke 22 and 42, you know, where he's in the Garden of Gethsemane and he's deciding, making that bottom line decision. I know you're for me. This is what I have to do. This is part of the plan. And, you know, we all know it. Not my will, but yours be done. And that was his bottom line. And then he got up and went on and, and then all the other things happened, right? They give us salvation. So Luke 22 and 42, settle that in your heart, not my will, but yours be done. The next thing we have to do is we have to get used to casting our cares on him daily. That really sounds cliche. I will say that. There's a lot of stuff, especially if you've been in church for many years and have heard a lot of things, right? We've heard things so much sometimes that it almost loses its power because we let it lose its power because it's so repetitive. We've heard it. Okay, cast your cares on the Lord because he cares for you. One thing I was thinking about when I was driving over here is when I went through my medical program and even before I got into the medical program I went into, I took many, many science classes and they drill that stuff in your head. But especially when I got into my medical program, I can't tell you how many of the same procedures I did over and over and over, how many quizzes, how many case studies of the same kind of stuff over and over and over. And if I looked at that and said, oh, that's cliche. Oh, I know how to do that. Then I would miss it because the benefit of hiding God's word in our heart and knowing these things and applying it as, a, as opposed to, that's cliche, I've heard that for the last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, is that we miss out on the benefit that it becomes our second nature, right? It's not a ritual. It's not religion. It's not where we just repeat the same thing over and over and hope and sprinkle some water on it that it's going to work. No, we hide his word inside our heart. We meditate. We are around the presence of God. Whether we can come to church or whether we have to listen to it at YouTube at home, that word gets inside of us. It is a part of who we are. And because of that, it's not cliche. It's a second nature. So let's talk about in medical terms how this relates 
if I'm in an emergency situation, you know, somebody's going through an anaphylactic reaction or a chest pain or anything like that, I don't have to think about how I'm going to respond. It's been so innately in me because it's been drilled in me and practiced and tested on so much. And I've heard it so much, right? That it's not cliche and I wouldn't dare call it cliche. I know how to respond. I know how to react. I know what to think and do. You know what I'm saying? So when I think about God's word and some of the repetitive stories or some of those phrases we hear, now is truly the time that we have to apply that. It can't just sit there anymore. That's great that we've meditated, we've known it, but now we have to apply it. And in the world that we're living in right now, the question is, do you really believe what you say you believe? Yeah, we've heard that, but do you? When it gets down to it, do you stand up for what's right? no matter if your family or friends or society, you know, do we believe it? Do we believe the power that's in the word? Do we believe what God says, what he says about us, about what's to come, about who we are, the power and the authority that we can have, the spiritual gifts that we can walk in? We have to believe that. And now is the time when the pressure is so turn up that we have to realize, wow, maybe just like Esther for such a time as this, I've been put here on this earth. We could have been born 100 years ago or 20 years later. We're here now with all this that's going on. Why? Is it because we're ambassadors of Christ with the mission and he has us here for such a time as this to apply the things that he's been teaching us? So casting your cares daily is going to allow you to get that off of you, right? There's so much that's going on. We have to, before one person is going through something, the next situation or, or financial struggle or job transition or health issue is coming. And we, we recognize that that's happening, but we can't allow the enemy to take all of our energy and our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And we have to enter into his presence and, and get in his word. And honestly, whether we feel like it or not, I have not felt like it, but yet here I am. <laughs> and, and when we do it, you do feel better. No, all the changes in life aren't, aren't, aren't perfect. No, things aren't changing immediately or as we would like them to. But my spirit and my soul feels better. And so my soul can continue to say yes. So casting your cares on him because how much he cares for us is so great, so deep. That's Psalms 55 and 22. And these may be those cliche phrases that we've heard in scriptures that we have to go back to. The other thing I really like is 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 through 5. Let me pull this one up. And this one is about our thoughts. And I'll go back to how I felt lately, just kind of in the neck pain and laying in the bed. So I'll talk about that. Um, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Hallelujah. Casting down every argument, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity, into the obedience of Christ. I love it. I love it. I love it. Every thought, everything that's not like him, every sickness, every disease, everything of lack, everything that's not like him. The other day, Bryson was sick. I don't know what was going on. He was screaming and crying. We couldn't get him to sleep. And I went from doing Tylenol for his teeth and gas drops and Bryce tried to rock him. We tried to do everything and something just rose up in me and I began to pray loudly, not just yelling and screaming, but with authority. I speak healing over this body. Everywhere that there's dis-ease, I speak ease. I bind the devil. Every sickness and disease, it must get out. I speak rest over him, peace over him. And immediately, he stopped crying and went back to sleep. I mean, immediately. The Lord has given us authority to take down everything, but, but it starts a lot of times in our mind. So with everything that's going on right now, God has given us the keys of the kingdom. And one of those keys is our mouth to speak the power of life and death and to cast down every single thing that exalts itself above the name of Jesus and who he is and the authority that he's given us. So these are our keys of how we're going to continue to say yes. How can you say yes if you're sick in your body for a long period of time? How can you say yes if you're wore down and you're you're thinking bad and you're in fear and anxiety? I can imagine, I've experienced, that would be extremely hard to say yes. And even if you are saying yes, and sometimes we do have to give God a broken yes. A, a yes that says, God, I don't even know how I'm going to say yes, but I just say yes. And you help my unbelief, Right. So those are, those are some of the scriptures that we're going to hold on to to say yes. The last thing I'll add is, is just some physical things. 
right? So one thing I had to do, even when I was in terrible pain with my neck and stuff, I took some Advil, right? <laughs> Drank some water and I had to get up and move. I couldn't do a whole lot, but I went to the garden. I got up and I moved my body. We have to take care of our bodies in these last days in order to say yes to the Lord. We can't say yes if we're in the hospital. And not to say that those things happen without our control sometimes, they do. But are you getting rest six to eight hours of sleep at night? Are you drinking water? Are you eating, you know, a good percentage of things that your body needs? You can have a cheeseburger or a donut. I have those things too. But are we doing the things to, to take care of our body so that we can say yes and follow the will of God and, and carry it out as we're supposed to? And also take time to exercise and do things that you enjoy. Reading, writing, journaling, whatever it is, painting, walking, gardening. So I just want to encourage you to say yes to the Lord and to continue to say yes. Because you said yes yesterday doesn't mean it's a yes today. And we all have to come to that point where we say, Lord, my soul says yes. My soul says yes. I won't stray, Jesus. My soul says yes. No matter what happens, my soul says yes. I'm saying yes. So I hope you guys are saying yes too. Lord, we just thank you so much right now for your word. It's an on-time word. Every single time, God, when we seek you and we draw near to you, your word says you draw near to us. I pray that this word encourages all of our hearts, especially mine. Lord, my soul says yes. It desires to say yes. Help me to say yes to your will and your way every single day. No matter what comes, no matter what I feel like, no matter what it looks like. I pray for all those watching that you encourage them. Bless their marriages. Bless their families. Bless their finances. Bless their health. Bless their mind. Lord, I bind up sickness and disease right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak healing, oh God. And allow us to walk in that and to do the necessary things to be healed and continue to walk in that, God. I pray for financial disparities and issues and burdens, God. Help us to cast that on you, oh God. And I just pray, oh God, that in this last time, in these last days, oh God, that you would just draw us so close to you, God. I know you're going to pour out your spirit. Pour it out, oh God. Just overwhelm us with your love, God, so that we can be a light in such a dark time. Lord, we're on the winning team. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, and we're so grateful. But help us to endure. Help us to have joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Help us, O oh God, to continue to say yes. And we know that you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory, O oh God. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Be encouraged, church. I love you all, praying for you all, and please continue to pray for me and my family.